Hey everybody, welcome to the Healthy Weight Challenge kickoff webinar. I hope everyone's doing well and excited about the year. It's gonna be the best year yet. And I think this is just a perfect way to get things kicked off. Um, today's webinar is to basically accomplish two things. One, if you're already committed to doing the challenge, is to give you the foundational information that you need to know about how this is gonna work and what you do need to do within the next week to get prepared. Um, secondly, if you are someone who is not yet sure if you want to do this challenge, it'll give you the information you need to decide to join us. Um, and so this is not meant to be comprehensive and, you know, everything you ever needed to know. There's going to be a lot more happening in the Facebook group. So this is just sort of to whet your appetite and um, help you to feel really prepared to get going and understand the basics. Now, if you do not have a Facebook account <laughs> and you really want to join us, here's what some people do is they set up an account just to participate um, in this challenge or in our Empowered and Healthy group, um, and they don't do anything else on Facebook. So that's an option for you. I don't currently have an option based in email, although I will have that next time around. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys. And we can get going. <laughs> I'm running this challenge a little bit differently than you might be seeing um, other people run, especially if you're um, part of other another doTERRA team, or you see how other doTERRA people are, are doing their challenge this month, and I'll get into the details of why. Um, also, just in case you guys um, don't know my background, if we haven't uh, gotten to know each other yet, um, my name is Trisha Sheehan. I am a holistic health coach and a certified essential oil coach. Um, one of the things I do is I take small groups of women through the 21 day sugar detox and I've taken a lot of groups through that and I've taken all of my learnings and experiences of what I'm seeing work and not work with people and put the best of it um, towards this challenge. So this is based on um, taking a lot of, of groups through and um, it's not going to be just about food. It's not going to be just about essential oils. It's going to be about um, a variety of things that you need to really accomplish your goals. So what are those things? Here are our six pillars of healthy weight because here's the thing, you can eat all the right things, but if you're forgetting about the other pillars, you're gonna have problems. You might not be able to lose weight, you might have health issues, same thing. You can exercise and be totally on top of your exercise, but if you're making poor food choices, you're super stressed out, you're not happy in your life, you're still gonna have problems with your health and or your weight. So um, I'm incorporating all of these pillars to help you get the best results you possibly can because I truly believe that you need to hit all of them to really be healthy. And this is not because this is going to be complicated or overwhelming. It can really be pretty straightforward and simple. I just don't want you to be so focused on one pillar that you forget all the rest and don't get your results. <laughs> this is the big elephant in the room, so I figured I'd address it right up front because I'm getting a lot of questions on this. Are we going to be weighing in? <laughs> um, my preference is that you don't. However, this is going to be totally up to you. Are you someone who does really well with the accountability of getting on your scale? Then you should get on your scale. But for a lot of us, the scale does not reflect true weight loss. It doesn't reflect fat loss. It is not a reflection of how good a job you're doing. It's not a reflection of how good of a person you are. And I think a lot of us just have kind of an unhealthy relationship with our scales. So I'm going to suggest that you don't worry about weighing yourself because you're going to know if this works because your clothes are going to fit better. You're going to be sleeping better. Your digestion's better. Your energy is better. Your mood is better. You're going to feel it. You don't need the scale to tell you those things. But I'm going to leave that up to you. But there are no official weigh-ins, you're not gonna be sharing your numbers with us, that kind of a thing. <laughs> I also just wanna give us a really good reality check because weight loss and the concept of weight is kind of fraught with a lot of anxiety and perceptions. And so I just wanna give you an idea of where we're coming at with this group and you can decide if this is a good fit for you. Um, but you can see these Barbie dolls on, on the left. On the, the first Barbie doll is how we think everyone's supposed to look. Everyone's supposed to be super skinny and everyone's supposed to look the same. And if we don't look like that, then we're too fat or we're unattractive. When in reality is most people, a normal person looks more like the doll on the right. 
this is normal and so and media and society has us our our perspective really goofed up about what a healthy woman looks like and i can tell you from experience working with various clients that there are people who look really healthy because they're thin and they have the worst health problems of anybody. Okay. And there's people who don't look so perfectly skin uh, thin and then they do their blood work and they are rocking on off cylinders. And so health is not equal to skinniness. And that's why this is not called the skinny jeans challenge. We're not going to be talking about skinniness because what is the healthiest place for you to be? It may not be super skinny because of genetics, because of the workouts you're doing, uh, because your natural body has curves. For whatever reason, your healthiest place might look different than this crazy Barbie doll. So you need to decide for yourself what's truly healthy for you because it's not about being skinny. This is all about being healthy. And the number on the scale, your weight, does not define who you are how good of a person you are, how worthy you are, how good of a job you're doing. And we're going to be reminding each other of this the whole way through. Okay. So let's just jump right into it. The big thing is food. You know, when we're talking about achieving a healthy weight, food is the most obvious place to go. It's super, super important. <coughs> On this challenge, there is no one specific food plan. Um, and here's why. It's because this group has a lot of different people in it. Some people are pretty new to learning about healthy eating. Some people have been eating healthy for a long time. Uh, you know, some people are just uh, super advanced. Maybe you're also a health coach and you're just trying to up your game. <clears throat> or maybe you are where I was just a few years ago and you're kind of clueless. You don't even know how to read labels and you're just getting started. Everyone is welcome and there's a place for all of you here. Um, and believe me, I know how overwhelming this is. I have got out some of the books that I've read about diets. I've got the 10 day detox diet, the 17 day diet, the sugar impact diet, hormone reset diet. I mean, I got stacks and I've read them all. And I've probably tried them all. <laughs> but here's the thing, you guys, diets do not work or we would all be at our healthy weight if it was that simple. Dieting doesn't work. We want to learn some really good habits that we can take with us for the long term. And you can look at this challenge as a bit of a reset a restart, a kickoff to your year, but I wouldn't look at it as a diet. And so you can use this to kind of clean things up and to learn and to establish healthy habits for the year. But when we end officially on February 13th, I'm going to help you think through what that looks like afterwards, but it, you're not going to go back to the way you've been eating because this isn't a diet. We're just going to be learning healthy, healthy habits and not perfection. You know, it's a good 80-20 rule. You can still have your wine, you can still have your chocolate, you can still have pizza sometimes, but um, you're going to really learn what truly nourishes your body and really what serves you really well. Um, okay, <laughs> so if you're someone who does do really well with a specific plan, here's some recommendations I can make. The Whole30 is a great plan, and I'll follow this up with an email. To different links where you can get these books. You can also get them oftentimes from your local library and just um, check them out for free. Whole30 is an excellent choice. It is fairly restrictive. So if you're not looking to do something that's pretty restrictive, another really good option is the 21 day sugar detox diet. This is the one I take a lot of people through and here's why I chose it. It's very reasonable. You're not eating any weird foods. Um, it's not as restrictive as, as other plans. Um, it resets your taste buds. Um, if you know sugar cravings is not your biggest problem, you can also take this plan and add in fruit. So this plan um, only allows apples and bananas just to reset your taste buds. You can do this and add in fruit, add in all your fruits, because fruit is awesome. There's no reason to restrict fruit. It's just as if you avoid the sweetness on your taste buds if you're trying to retrain your taste buds. So those are probably my two best options. Of course, you can go to Barnes and Noble and scan the aisles and there's a zillion things and um, they're probably all fine. You just have to learn what works for you. Because if anybody tells you there's one plan that works for everyone, that's a big red flag. There is no one plan that works for everybody. Some people thrive as a vegetarian. Some people do awesome on paleo. It really depends. And I definitely want to address keto because that's the big craze right now. And like even Dr. Axe is coming out with a program in February, I think. 
And um, here's the thing with keto, it's easy to do it wrong and really goof yourself up. So I just really don't recommend it unless you're doing it with some really strong support from a functional medicine doctor or a functional health coach, because it's really easy to do it wrong, especially if you have thyroid problems. Thyroid people do not do well on keto, okay? So think hard. If you're thinking about keto, think hard about, about if you really want to do that or not. No matter what you choose, please do not severely restrict your calories. I have done this and I lost weight and then I gained it all back and then some because I really messed up my metabolism and I really messed up my hormones. Please do not do that. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake I did. There is no need to severely restrict yourself. It's not healthy. It's not nourishing. It's not necessary. Okay. So that's my one strict rule is no severe calorie restriction. Okay. <laughs> at a minimum, if you're trying to just come up with your own plan, it has to work in your life, right? You're not going to stick with it if it's too hard, too overwhelming, too difficult to put your meals together. You can go this way. You just uh, choose what you're going to minimize, what you're going to maximize, and what you're going to prioritize. And you make your own list of what you want to put in those three categories. Um, I definitely suggest no sugar or very, very low sugar, including alcohol, including stevia, including honey. Let's just try to reset and get off of those things. Um, you know, if you feel like there's literally no way you could exist without some stevia in your coffee or something, you decide for yourself. But I'll tell you, you can do it because I've coached a lot of people through these things and people who think they could never do it, they do it. Um, also, lots of veggies in all different colors, however you like them. Uh, you can throw them on your eggs. You can bake them in the oven. You can <coughs> saute them. You know, there's just a zillion different things you can do with them. Get them in every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner. <coughs> we'll be discussing snacking. Uh, but if you have your snacks, do a, do a veggie, do some fruit. Um, plenty of protein um, is pretty key. Um, good healthy fats. Fats are not the enemy. Um, there's a lot of education on this now, so you've probably seen it, but fat was demonized the last couple of decades um, and wrongly so. Sugar is our demon and all of those low fat products, I would just put a big X on those because if it's marketed as low fat, it's probably very high in sugar. So let that be a big red flag if you're um, looking at options that are low fat. Um, and then as far as carbs go, you're gonna have to decide what you wanna do about carbs. For a lot of us, especially women, it's the bread, it's the pasta, it's the rice, it's the crackers. We eat them because they're easy. They give us quick energy. They're you know, not difficult to prepare, but they're really not serving you as well as some healthy carbs. So a healthy carb, vegetables, fruits. Um, and this again, especially if you have thyroid issues, having a little bit of carbs can be really good for you. Some people go too low carb and they feel terrible. This happened to me too. Um, so I'm giving you guys all of the things I did so you don't have to waste your time making these mistakes. Um, but like a half of a sweet potato, some awesome carbs. If you're exercising a lot, you're going to need a little bit more carbs. Just choose good ones. Definitely no artificial colors, sugars, preservatives, chemical junk out. Um, we'll talk about reading labels. If you need extra support, that's what I'm here for. Um, there are no dumb questions. If you don't understand how to read a label, you don't understand how to go grocery shopping. That is no problem at all. We can provide all of that help for you. Okay. So. There's certain things you're going to minimize. There's certain things you're going to maximize. And certain things you're going to prioritize. Um, obviously, water should be on there, you know, under maximize and or prioritize. The one thing I'll say about water, which is a little different than what um, some other coaches will tell you, is um, typically they say drink a certain amount of water according to your body weight. I would prefer that you guys go buy some other things because. Body weight is only one factor. It depends on your, the altitude where you live, how much are you exercising, the water content of the food you're eating. So it's really a bit more than that. I think it's better to go by your urine. Um, and yes, we can talk about <laughs> our elimination channels during this challenge, um, which is actually critically important. But your urine should be a light yellow. If it's dark yellow, if it's neon yellow, that's a problem, okay? So it should be very light yellow and it should not be clear. If you're peeing out what looks like water, you might need to back off of your water. So that's just like a quick, easy, good indication of where you personally are at. 
Um, on that subject, bowel movements, you have to be having bowel movements every single day. So you might say, oh, I'm regular, and regular to you means you go twice a week. We don't want that sort of regular. We want every single day, ideally two to three times a day, okay? So if you're going less than that or more than that, you need some help getting your bowels moving correctly, that's what I'm here for as well. But that's super important. So that's the food piece. <laughs> a couple of top tips. Um, we're gonna be sharing plenty of recipes, so you're gonna have ideas. Um, if you're someone who needs a meal planner because you're not really comfortable with that or you just need some help getting organized, my favorite resource is called Real Plans and I will send the links. You can sign up for that if you want. It makes it so easy. You can put in how you want to eat, you know, any preferences, food sensitivities, all that kind of stuff, paleo, whatever, so you fill it out and it will gather recipes for you from all over the internet, um, vetted good um, websites. It will compile your shopping list it doesn't come to your house and cook for you. That's the only problem with it. But short of that, it is so great and makes it really easy and quick to do your meal planning. And you have to meal plan. If you don't meal plan, you're setting yourself up for failure. Um, planning is absolutely the secret sauce. Get yourself prepared ahead of time. Um, some good things you can do. Cook once, eat twice. So double the recipe, plan to have it the next day for lunch. You know, and even breakfast, Breakfast doesn't have to be eggs or oatmeal or things like that. Breakfast can be whatever you want. And if eating, you know, heating up some dinner leftovers is the best option for you, go for it. Like don't get held back by the idea of it's not a breakfast food, so I can't eat it for breakfast. Um, also, focusing what you can have, not what you can't have, makes a lot of people much more successful. So don't dwell on, I can't have my ice cream, I can't have my soda, I can't have this, I can't. Think about, oh gosh, this recipe looks so good. I get to have this awesome chicken dish, my favorite vegetable. Um, you know, your mindset has a tremendous impact on how this will go for you. Um, also for your meal prep, <coughs> it takes time. It just, it just does, but um, doing it ahead of time will save you during the week. So you can take a block of time maybe on Sunday afternoon if you've got kids, uh, you know, Send your spouse with them to the playground for a while or, you know, ask everyone to chip in and help chopping things. You can even prepare things ahead of time and just make up some freezer meals. You're just shoving things in the oven, <coughs> but you're just going to need to block some time on your calendar. And you can go ahead and, and figure that out now ahead of time. You can use your crock pot, your instant pot. Those are also great resources. Um, I have an instant pot and I've used it a little bit. It still scares me a little bit. I'm going to have to admit but I know a lot of people use it with great success. The crock pot, I love it because you can't mess it up. You throw stuff in, it does all the work, you can't mess it up. So if you're not a great cook like me, the crock pot is something you probably have got to have. It's gonna be your new best friend. Um, also, if you're gonna be trying a bunch of new recipes, just in case it doesn't work out, you're like, oh, this, just, this doesn't look good, or I did it wrong, just have some backups just in case, some easy backups. What I do is I typically just um, make eggs. Eggs with some vegetables is my backup, but have something on hand just in case so you don't end up ordering pizza. All right, moving on to movement. Again, you're going to decide what this looks like for you because we're all different. And I just want you to find something that really works. But the rule is you're going to move every single day. Now, this doesn't mean you're going to be doing a hard workout every day, but some sort of movement. And on your more rest days, you could you know, take a walk, go for a bike ride have a dance party in your kitchen, stretch, whatever you need to do. But here's the reason, because if there is no day off, then there is no decision about which day am I taking off? Because that is where there's a really bad rabbit hole because, oh, well, Monday's gonna be my rest day. Oh, well, no, I'm gonna take another rest day on Thursday. And then you just don't end up moving your body as much as you need to at all. Um, so we're gonna move every day and you can decide what that looks like. And I really encourage you to vary the intensity because you don't want to over-exercise, which does really bad things to your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And when your cortisol is out of whack, it causes a lot of different problems. So we don't want to over-exercise. Um, we all want you to find something that's going to be sustainable. This isn't something you just, you hate it and you power through it for four weeks and be done with it. Like let's some, find something that's enjoyable or, you know, get with a partner and it's more fun because you have girl time or... Um, you enjoy trying something new, whatever it is, make it something that you can sustain. This is not just powering through the month. Um, 
I did in the group invite Lisa Klein on to talk about Beachbody and she's on right now as well. She is an awesome resource. If you feel like working at home, working out at home is going to work for you. Beachbody is an, just an excellent option. It's extremely affordable. There's a zillion options. No matter what type of exercise you like to do, there's something for you. And Lisa is just the best coach. She's so positive and inspiring and she'll make you feel like you can do it. <laughs> and um, she gives, you know, recipe information. And if you need a, an exercise coach, she is just absolutely the way to go. Um, so I'll make sure that if you want to connect with her, you know how to do that. So that's a great option for you. Um, moving on to the stress piece. <coughs> stress is totally unavoidable because we are humans living in the real world, right? So it's not about getting rid of all your stress because that's not even possible. Um, obviously, you can, um, you know, manage it to a point. So if there's something that you need to get off your plate so that your stress is lower, you might need to do that. It might be saying no to some re volunteer requests or some things that are just taking up your time and you don't, you don't have time for anymore. So, um, you know, do what you can to make your schedule really just manageable. Um, but for the stress that remains, um, you're just going to need some support. That's what this group is here for. You can obviously have caught, of course, talk to the people in your real life and explain to them what you're going to be doing. Um, ask for their, you know, respect of what you're doing, ask them to support you, that kind of a thing. Um, also, just being really aware of what your triggers are is so helpful. Like, you know, my kids get a little crazy around dinner time. It's the end of the day and they're, they're losing their stuff and it's just going to totally make me want to drink all the wine. You're going to know that ahead of time and you're going to have your buffers in place. All right. When the kids do this, I do this. Um, it might be put hubby in charge and you go for a walk and take some, some breaths. Um, it might be making your favorite cup of tea and you know it certainly does not have to be something that's related to food um <laughs> it might be putting on your favorite song whatever it is taking some time to think about what's going to trigger me this week and make me want to order pizza or drink all the wine or stay up till 2 a.m or all the things i'm trying to avoid um what's going to trigger that and then what can i do instead to buffer it um sleep is a great way to manage stress your body takes care of so much while we're sleeping, um, including your, your whole nervous system and, and your brain. So getting enough sleep is an important part. Um, think about your screen time. Are you spending a lot of time watching TV, a lot of time on the computer, a lot of time on your phone? Um, the science is there that says a lot of screen time really stresses us out. It gives us a lot of anxiety. So that might be something to really think about. And you can grab your phone and look up. It'll tell you how much time you're spending on it. And you can set a goal for yourself to check it once a week during the challenge and have the amounts go down and down and down so you're not spending too much time on your phone. Also, identifying some ways to have some fun during this challenge. You know, some of this stuff is going to be, um, you're going to feel like it's some work. You know, it's, it's food and it's exercise and it's this and that. Well, just get out and have fun too. Like this is supposed to be a really empowering month and a really inspiring month. And, you know, get with your friends or plan a fun activity with your family or just do an activity by yourself that you really enjoy. Whatever it is, build in some fun to your month, okay? And keep in mind that being busy does not equal being a good person, an important person. Being busy just means that you're stressing yourself out. So food for thought there as well. <coughs> okay, so on to the essential oil portion. Here is the protocol, and these graphics are in the group, um, so you have easy access to them. This that I have that I have posted is what I consider the beginner version. Um, so, if you have not used essential oils internally before, this is where I would like you to start. This is not something that's specific to essential oils. This is um, something I would recommend you do with anything. If you're taking, you know, an herb or, or um, you know, vitamins, supplements, whatever you're taking, you want to give your body time to adjust to these things. Just like if you go to run a marathon, you're not gonna go out and run 26 miles on day one. You're gonna maybe run two miles, and then run four miles, and then another four miles, and you're gonna ease yourself up um, and train your body to adjust and adapt. So it's the same thing with essential oils. Um, you guys who know me know that I always believe in low and slow, and also because I want you to be paying attention to what happens 
to your body when you take these things and anything else that you take. Um, we're all a little different. It's something called bio-individuality. And so what works for you know, your sister or your best friend may not be exactly what works perfect for you. So um, with breakfast, you're gonna take a Mito 2 Max, start with one. Some people have so much energy with one, they don't even need the second one. So just see how it goes for you, but, uh, but low and slow. So start with one, and at this, also with breakfast, you're gonna take a veggie cap and you're gonna fill it with two drops of Yerra Palm and one drop of pink pepper. Um, and I'll go over in a minute how to fill the veggie caps. I know that's a very common question. Um, again, with lunch, Mito 2 Max again, start with one and go up to two if you still need more energy. <coughs> you do not want to take Mito 2 Max after lunch though because you don't want to have trouble sleeping because it, it gives you energy. Um, so then at lunch, your veggie cap is a drop of frankincense, a drop of pink pepper, and a drop of black pepper. And then with dinner, you're going to do another veggie cap, two drops of yarrow palm, and one drop, drop of turmeric. And again, this is a little different than you might be seeing um, with other people who are doing the skinny jeans challenge. And this is really because I want you guys to go low and slow. Um, you absolutely can add more than this, but I want you to start here if you are new to ingesting oils. And I'll get into um, a sort of more advanced version um, in, in a minute. So there are some other oils that can also be really helpful when it comes to metabolism support and um, managing your weight. And you can decide if you want to use those or not, but those include grapefruit or the slim and sassy blend, green mandarin. Um, I really suggest digestive enzymes. Um, these are one of my top five doTERRA products. This is going to help you break down all your food so you can get the nutrients out of it. And so that's going to be really beneficial to you. <coughs> the Lifelong Vitality Pack that has all your essential vitamins and minerals, your healthy fats, and uh, cellular health herbs, and a good probiotic. Um, if you need any more information about those optional products to decide if you want them or not, just get in touch with me. I'm happy to help, but um, I really uh, think that they will be of service to you during this time. Okay, so veggie caps. Veggie caps uh, look like this, and they pull apart really easily. And this is just made from vegetable cellulose, so it's very flexible, and it just comes in a bottle like you see. Um, very, very, very inexpensive. <laughs> so you just break it apart, you take your essential oil, put in the number of drops that you want, close it back up. Some people choose to also put in a carrier oil. This is totally optional. You do not have to do that. Some people just like to because it dilutes the essential oil. You can also dilute the essential oil by taking it with food, which is what I do recommend. Um, I like taking the mid-meal, um, which helps um, combat kind of that burp up effect. So if you take it after your meal, you can get that um, you know, taste in your throat of the oils. But if you take it mid-meal, that should um, be significantly reduced. So if you do want to put in a carrier oil, here's an important point. It needs to be edible. This is not edible, although some people eat it and they're fine. But this is fractionated coconut oil from doTERRA. This is intended for rollerballs. This is not intended for you to eat, okay? If you would like to do that, um, grab something like this, MCT oil, your regular coconut oil. Um, this is called Brain Octane Oil from Bulletproof, something like that. These are the ones that are intended to be edible. Again, this is optional, but you know yourself best. If you have a sensitive stomach, then the more you can dilute them, the better, and absolutely take them with food if you're sensitive. Some people are not very sensitive, and they can take it on an empty stomach, no problem. You just have to kind of decide for yourself how, how that's going to go. Um, you cannot pre-make these. These will melt <laughs> all over your counter. So don't pre-make them. Some people do freeze them. So that's an option for you. But then you have to have access to a freezer or a cooler and take them immediately out of the freezer. So that may not be that convenient for you. <coughs> um, one little tip that I do have to make it convenient is you can get a bottle like this, and I'll send you the link to this on Amazon. And you can pre-mix your essential oils. You can put your yarrow palm and your pink pepper, whatever you're doing, you decide if you're using the basic low and slow protocol or the more advanced one and pre-mix them in here. And then you just take your veggie, um, sorry, take your veggie cap and your dropper and you drop it in, one, two, three, easy peasy. Take it down with some, some water and some food. So um, I hope that you'll find this to be pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, I know if it's new, um, you might have questions. So 
just ask if, if you're still not sure. Um, but you can also, what I do is I just take my bottles and I add you know, a drop of this, a drop of that, a drop of that, and it's still pretty quick and easy. So, I, But I know that a lot of people are in a rush when they need to take supplements, and so uh, we can find some ways to make it really work for you. But definitely don't pre-make them and then just leave them out because they will melt. Okay, so a more advanced option, if you're someone who's been using essential oils for a long time and you're ready for a little bit more, um, here's what <coughs> you can do. Two drops of black pepper, two drops of pink pepper, two drops of turmeric, and two drops of yarrow palm twice a day. So maybe that's breakfast and lunch. So it's just a little bit more oil instead of separating them out into lower amounts. And then for your third veggie cap of the day, I really like grapefruit, cilantro, bergamot, and lavender. Um, of course, you can decide what you want this to be. A lot of people also really like copaiba, copaiba um, is another one. Um, or maybe you want to be taking On Guard this time of year to help you not get sick. If you need help deciding, just let me know. Um, and these graphics will be in the Facebook group, so you have easy access to them. Um, and you can uh, print them out or make yourself a little cheat sheet. Okay, so why these oils? Here's why. Um, physically, they're going to help boost your metabolism reduce your inflammation, um, support your digestion, help your circulation to be really good. Um, they help balance out your hormones, make sure you have plenty of energy, um, lower that cortisol that I was talking about, that stress hormone, soothe your nervous system and support healthy blood sugar levels. Um, and the oils also work on an emotional level as well because they cross the blood brain barrier. Um, and this is a topic we'll be talking a lot more about in the coming year in, in the Empower and Healthy group. Um, but these oils help you with body acceptance, feeling like it's safe to lose weight, easing any obsession you have around food or weight, <coughs> um, acceptance of yourself, um, being mindful about what you're doing, and ownership of feelings. Um, and so again, this is not comprehensive. We're going to get a lot more into this into the in the Facebook group, but just to give you some ideas around um, all of the thoughtfulness that went into choosing these oils. Okay, one thing I do want to make sure you know <coughs> is that it's possible to have a bit of an emotional reaction. Um, I get this from people who do my sugar detox with me, so it's possible from uh, changes in food, and it's also possible from the yarrow palm uh, oil blend. Um, here's why it's not a bad thing. When our bodies are getting what they need, they will do activities that serve us. So if we have an emotional issue that's kind of very deep, It'll help bring it up because it wants you to detox it out, just like it does with physical toxins. Um, so consider it like an emotional cleanse. It's bringing things up. It wants you to deal with it and release it and get it out. So if this is happening for you, you have some choices. Obviously, if you're ready to deal with the emotions or not, um, some people decide it's not the right time. They're not really ready for that. And so they choose not to take the yarrow palm internally. Instead, just rub it on your skin. Now, if you're a super, super sensitive person and still have the emotional reaction to even topical use, it's not common at all, but it's possible, you can just um, not use yarrow palm um, and just substitute frankincense, um, frankincense or copaiba instead. <coughs> also, um, an oil that really helps to uh, deal with the emotional response is green mandarin. It's a citrus oil. You can just add a drop or two to your water. You could diffuse it. Um, you could uh, add a drop to your veggie cap, and it just helps you to deal with those emotions. Um, and I have another uh, rollerball blend that I'll share that um, people are having really good success with. Um, there's also a great breathing technique that gives you a physical reset, especially if you're having a big emotional response. And what you do is you breathe in for a few seconds, hold it for a few seconds, and then breathe out forcefully for a few seconds. So I call it the three, five, seven. Breathe in for three then hold it for five, and then out forcefully for seven. And that gives you a physical reset um, that'll help your brain, it'll help your body. So that's something you can do. Um, and resistance. A lot of times when we have an emotion, we just naturally resist it. I don't want to have these feelings. And you can decide, you know, if you're in a place where, um, that serves you or not, but my encouragement is if you're having some emotions come up, that you can use this as an opportunity to work through them and you know, find a friend or a therapist or another trusted resource to, to help you work through it. 
um, journaling can help or prayer or meditation and those sorts of things. But this could be a, a good chance once and for all to get it up and out. But I want you to be aware that it's possible to have an emotional response. If it's related to the food, it will likely pass within three days. Um, you can also, especially with food changes, you could have a physical detox reaction. Um, typically, I find that this lasts, again, two to three days and no longer. So if you have the first couple of days, I guess when you start the challenge, I encourage you to try to minimize your commitments, make sure you're getting enough sleep, drink plenty of clean filtered water, you know, take a walk, but don't over-exercise. Um, and let your body move through those first three days that we heart it should not last more than three days. Um, you might get a headache, you might feel like you have the flu, these sorts of things. And we'll be sharing ideas to help you, you know, work through any symptoms like that. Of course, see your doctor if you're worried, but also just know that this is a common uh, response when you change up your diet. <laughs> okay, moving on. I really wanted to include gratitude and mindfulness into the challenge because I really don't think you can have um, a successful change in health without it. And mindset is just so powerful. And the mind-body connection is something that's starting to be much better understood by science. And so if you can um, be on the lookout during your day for things to be grateful for, it'll change your entire day. So you can write things on a little piece of paper and throw them in a jar. You can keep a journal. You can keep notes on your phone, whatever works for you. But fine and say, you know, five to 10 things every day that you're grateful for. And I really like to think about that video that comes out every Christmas where the guy wakes up and he has got a giant red bow in his head and his wife next to him has a giant red bow on her because it's such a gift that they woke up that morning and then their kids come running in and they all have big bows on them. And then the sink turns on and there's a big bow on that. And he's just so grateful for some of the uh, basic things in life that we usually take for granted. And he's like, I have a car. This is so awesome. My car and my car has filled with gas and there's food in my fridge and um, the sun is up. And I know hard things really happen in life, but there's always something to be grateful for. So uh, we're going to be focusing on that during the challenge. Um, and the mindfulness of just being really aware of what we're putting in our bodies and, um, and our emotions and just kind of being really connected with ourselves. <laughs> and the other pillar is community and support. And that's why we're doing this together and why I really hope that you'll engage in the Facebook group and um, you know, support others and let us support you. Uh, people who are isolated and feel lonely literally have health problems. So let's not have that be you join with us. Of course, hopefully you have people in your kind of real life, everyday life that can support you as well. But not all of us have that because some people who are not also on a healthy journey um, may not be supportive because it's not about you, it's about them. And if they um, are around someone who's being healthy, they might feel bad for the unhealthy choices they're making. So sometimes that dynamic is at play. And so um, just make sure you're not isolated. Have, have an accountability buddy or a support system, and um, absolutely we are part of that in this group. Um, interestingly, if you've ever heard of the blue zones, these are places in the world where people live a really long time and they're quite healthy, <coughs> and they've been studied extensively. And one of the things that always comes up is these people have awesome community, and there's no one that's isolated. Um, it's, these places tend to not be in the U.S. We um, our modern lives in the U.S. don't um, really revolve around community the way that they do in other parts of the world. Um, so that might be an area where we need to more uh, purposefully add in some extra community for ourselves. But it literally affects your health and your longevity to be um, in a community. So this is these are our six pillars. Just a quick recap. Um, you're making your healthy food choices. You're moving your body. Uh, managing your stress, using your essential oils and your um, the Mito2 Max supplement. We're going to focus on gratitude, being connected with our bodies and our and our minds, and engaging in our community so that we get and give lots of support. Um, again, this is designed to really work for you. If you're someone who needs more structure than this, then just get in touch with me and I'll help you come up with your structure. But we're all in different places, so a plan that's that I'm going to be following may not be the right plan for you. So um, you're going to have to take time this week, block time in your calendar, write it down. What are you going to be doing? What are you committing to? Be awesome if you post it to the groups. We can help hold you accountable and help support you through it. Um, 
So what's next? Okay, so you're gonna make sure you're part of the Facebook group and um, I'll email you guys the link just to make double sure that everyone's in there. This challenge is free for you if you get your doTERRA products from our team. That means buying them through me or a wellness advocate who's on my team. If you're not sure if your wellness advocate is on my team, just let me know. We can easily figure that out. If you get your doTERRA products elsewhere, that is awesome too. You're welcome to join us, but there is a $35 fee to join. Um, typically for challenges like this, they typically cost anywhere from $99 to $200. Um, so I'm making this uh, available to you guys um, free as a thank you just for being part of our team and just um, charging a small fee for those of us, uh, for those of you who, um, who are not on our team. In the group, there's going to be freebies. There's a gratitude journal that way if you need to print it out and keep record of your, your gratitude during the day, that's available. I also have a food diary that you can download and print out. Um, or you can just grab your favorite notebook, but um, keeping a food diary is, is uh, not to be calorie counting. It's not to be obsessing over food. It's literally just to help you kind of stay on track and remember what you're doing. Cause sometimes it's easy just, you know, you're on the go, you're barely even thinking about it, putting stuff in your mouth. And we just want to be more mindful about what we're eating. And if you have to write it down, that tends to help. So if you feel like that's something that would serve you well, then that's uh, in there for you. And over the next week, you just got to spend some time planning, really. Plan your food, plan your movement. Remember, you're going to do it every single day. Some way, shape, or form, you're going to move your body. <coughs> Use your oils and supplements. Um, make sure that your first three days, just in case you don't feel well, um, that you're not you know, overstretched and you will just allow yourself the possibility of self-care during those first few days. Um, if you would like to take a before picture, you can certainly do that. It's not required. Um, but there will be thank you gifts for anyone who submits a testimonial or before and after pictures um, just as a thank you so we can help other people see how effective this protocol is. Um, be on the lookout for an email from me because it's going to have links to that meal planner, um, some recommended books, some other helpful resources, and just make sure you're getting emails from me. Um, so if anybody has questions, this is the time to unmute yourself and ask. And I'm just checking the chat. If anyone has fitness and exercise questions or want options, you can get in touch with Lisa Klein. Her email is fullheartfitness at gmail.com. Um, if you need to get in touch with me and you don't know how to reach me on Facebook, you can find me at Trisha Healthcoach at gmail.com, T R I C I A Healthcoach at gmail.com. And I definitely look forward to seeing you guys in the group. And I'll start posting this week to help you get prepared. So um, feel free to share this webinar with friends or family who you think would benefit, um, or if you want to bring them on um, so that you have a buddy to do it with, that is great too. So doesn't look like anybody has questions. You can also put it in the chat if you prefer. Are the oils sold as a package for the cleanse? No, they are not. This is not a doTERRA pr uh, protocol. It's something that um, some of us wellness advocates developed. So it's not sold as a package, but if you need me to list out the products, you can easily find them. I can certainly do that. Um, a few people are doing the doTERRA cleanse and restore, which does come as a kit. Um, that is an appropriate option for people who know that they need to clean the pipes, if you will, before doing um, the Healthy Weight Challenge just to get the maximum results, especially over the holidays. If it's like you've been eating a lot of junk food, you haven't been exercising, drink a lot of alcohol, and you just need a cleanse, you can do that first and then start on the Healthy Weight uh, Protocol. And the, the Facebook group will stay open. Um, so that if you need an extra month to get support, that that will be available. All right. Well, you guys know how to reach me if something else pops up, but I'm just excited about this. I'm going to be doing it along with you. And um, I think it's just going to be, you know, very inspiring and positive and um, looking at our weight really differently for this year and get ourselves into a healthy place physically and emotionally. So take care, everybody. And I hope you have an awesome day and I will definitely see you in the group. Bye.